Hello. I'm Robert, by the way. Hi, Robert. I'm Joy. Hi, Joy. This is my daughter, Elise. She's got a three and a half year old. She does not want you to have to vaccinate under yeah. any circumstance. Him too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Once you learn the truth. Are you recording, Andy? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So have you been affected by vaccines at all? Personally, no. My family never believed in vaccinations. And we also are not common to automatically believe everything the news media tells us. Thank Since 70% of mainstream media's budgets do in fact come from the very pharmaceutical companies selling these toxins exactly. and trying to now force them upon us against our will. Um, I also have a daughter. This is my daughter, Elise. And she has a daughter, three and a half years old, named Jade and she is going to be subject to this bill because my daughter works and she can't afford a private school and, and she cannot do the homeschooling because she has to work so this bill is incredibly violent uh, just on a health level but uh, constitutionally it's it's unequal protection if you're privileged exactly, yeah. enough uh, to be able to afford private schools then you don't have to poison your children exactly. but if you're poor or you're a working mother who doesn't have quite enough money to pay, pay for private school and cannot homeschool, then your children have to be vaccinated or be denied any sort of educational credits in this state. Um, after seeing the stories from the Italian government, we've been lied to once again, no surprise there. Autism is absolutely caused by mercury and the aluminum as well. The Italian government just awarded, what was it, $900 million against Glaxo, Glaxo Smith Klein, I think it was. And then of course we got all the fraud from Merck. Uh, federal, there, Merck is up on federal fraud charges related to uh, altering the safety and efficacy data related to their vaccines. Well, Kaiser, and they're gonna be deciding when we get vaccinated because this bill doesn't just cover the currently uh, recommended vaccines. They're saying that from here forward under this bill, the pharmaceutical company and a bunch of bureaucrats are gonna tell us we could, we could be forced to take up to 200 vaccines. Wow. Not scientists, not doctors, not parents, bureaucrats and rich fat cat pharmaceutical companies. So that's why I'm here. Not only that, but the doctors don't even know what's in the vaccines. 90% yeah, of the time educated. that I've ever asked a doctor, do you know what's, have you ever read the package insert on this drug you're trying to recommend to me? And they don't the have answer is always no. I've even had doctors try to stop me from obtaining the package insert. And I've even had pharmacists say, well, we don't want to show it to you because if you saw it, you wouldn't take the medicine. One of those times I was pregnant and a doctor told me to take a medicine that he promised me was safe. I was, I was pregnant with Elise. I went to the pharmacy, I asked for the package insert, they tried to prevent me from getting my hands on it, I finally did. And the first thing I saw in there was a picture of a deformed baby. And this is after a doctor reassured me over and over again, can't harm you or your child. So yeah, I don't believe what they say. Yeah, my sister, like many other pregnant women, was um, tricked into getting the whooping cough and the flu vaccine oh. while she was pregnant with Ooh. my nephew. Yeah, oh. she. Well, up until recently, it was actually illegal to inject Ex pregnant yeah, mothers yeah, with anything. Was. Yeah, it was. And every time I was in, because I just had him two months ago, every time I was in um, a regular OBGYN office, they were like, "You need to take a flu shot. You need to get the flu shot. Flu shot. Flu shot." And oh yeah, wow. you need a cesarean. I'm like, you need. I'm like, yeah. I'm not injecting myself with that. We ended up actually going so far to have a home birth to get away from all that. So. Uh, yeah. Elise was born at home. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> totally healthy, no complications. We got, so much, we got so much bad reviews about it. When We're actually yeah. designed for having babies, aren't we? I know, we yeah. are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, everything went smoothly. It was a perfect birth. And yeah, your body knows no what to do. No well, yeah. what, what complications. Yeah, they almost me? didn't let me take my daughter home with me because she was a month early because I didn't vaccinate her. They're trying what? to say that I couldn't take her home unless I gave her the hepatitis yeah, B shot. Yeah, at least didn't get the home birth. And I'm like, why does she have any risk of getting hepatitis That's B? That's like setting right them now. up to be drug addicts. <laughs> I know. Like, yeah. She's not taking any. What convinced me drug. about the home birth was when I found out that statistically, even in a high risk pregnancy, the outcome for both the mother and the child is exponentially better if they don't make it to the operating room or the birth room with the doctor. Yeah. Is in, in other words, if they accidentally have the baby in the car, on a train, on a bus, or even in the elevator trying to get to the operating room, the baby and the mother are always healthier than if they actually make it to what I call the butcher shop. I'm sorry. Yeah. They, that's what I've come to find out <laughs> yeah. is going on there. So, yeah. That's why I call it that. But. <laughs> a lot of, there's been a lot more um, death 
rates with infants since they've started doing cesareans. Well, as yeah, like I mean, we have thing. like one of they the highest standard, infant mortality rates. We, I think treatment. we have the highest infant mortality rates. Standard yeah. treatment in a breech birth is always an immediate cesarean. However, the risk of having a breech birth naturally is exponentially lower than the risks associated with a cesarean. Even if you are so, breached, there's ways of getting the baby turned well, exactly. around. Exactly, and the yeah, doctors don't know those methods, and they, they exactly. don't try them because then they would lose about 15 grand for the surgery. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. make more money. <laughs> That's yeah. why you need to go with the midwife because they know how to do that kind of thing. Yeah. The, so. Midwives are trained to do mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So, um... Get some other people to talk here. That's yeah. that's our story. It, it sounds like we have a lot in common. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank it was you. Very nice to meet you. What's nice your name? My name's Andrea. Andrea, and, and where, this where is are you? Robert. Hi, Robert. Oh. And where are you? Uh, we live in Sacramento currently. And what are you using the footage for today? Um, he is doing. Um, he's with an underground radio show at oh. Sierra College, okay. and he's also starting his own um, website. It's called Radio1984.com. Check it out. Nice. When we see the results of these hearings today, we're going to be back with some signs that we're not going to fill up until we see the results. Basically, I'll tell you right now, though, if the result is that they are going to mandate this atrocity, um, we are going to be filing a federal lawsuit to get an injunction against implementation of this. Uh, we've already put up a GoFundMe profile. What's the name of it, Elise? Oppose SB 277. So oppose it's GoFundMe.com forward slash Oppose SB 277. Okay. So go, GoFundMe.com forward slash Oppose SB 277. The Nuremberg trial um, basically enumerated, you know, uh, conf informed consent. Yes. And so for them to it is force a violation, vaccinate. exactly. It's yeah. a violation of yeah. the Thanks Nuremberg. Thanks for bringing that up. That is so true. And so they can be sued. And yes. they deserve to be sued if they try to do it. Yes. Yes. So All is right. there anything you guys want to say to just the rest of the Californians out there that are maybe on the fence about vac uh, vaccine? Read the mandate? package inserts. Read, yeah. read them yourself at, before you try and tell me or anyone else whether or not these things are safe. If these vaccines were safe, we would not be here today. We are here because we know for a fact they are not safe because we've read the studies, the scientific research. We don't just believe what the mainstream media tells us. And if you do, you are maybe need to turn the TV off and read something, like the ingredients and package insert of the medicine that you want to give your children. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. It was very, nice, you. To you very nice meeting you. Very nice meeting you both. How many was pregnant? Uh, one and a half, so what's, what's very early. Name? Naomi. Naomi. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for coming here and you know letting your voice be heard. Yeah. Uh, are they actually letting people speak in there? Well, right now you you have an opportunity to tell people what you think about SB 277 about mandatory vaccines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're going to be a mother now. Well, I think everybody knows that some children do suffer adverse effects from the vaccinations and that in order to get the medical testing you would need to show that you do suffer adverse effects, your child does, it would take a really long time. Most people can't afford it anyways. So to mandate that everyone gets a vaccination is, it's like a death sentence to some. So that some people won't get the cough for a couple of weeks. There's really a problem with uh, doing multiple dose vaccines. It's overwhelming to the immune system. Uh, it crashes. Um, what, what do you, if, if this bill gets passed, what are you going to do? I'm already planning a way to work from home so that I can homeschool my child. I, there's no way I'm vaccinating my child. Same here. Do you feel like if this bill passes, um, they're going to stop there? <laughs> no, I don't. And in that case, I will flee the country, literally. It seems like it's going to catch fire and the rest of the states are going to do it as well. And we won't stop until 20 years later and we see the results that all these children have lost their, Gosh, their cognizance. Right. Oh, there you
My name is Jan Woods, and um, I live in Woodland, California. My primary concern about this bill is that once you start mandating what people can and cannot put in their bodies or uh, what kind of medical procedures they are allowed to have or forced to have, you are starting down a really dangerous slope, and um, that's my primary concern. I have a lot of other concerns about, about the kinds of... Uh, ingredients that are in the uh, actual vaccines. There's a lot of dangerous stuff like aluminum and mercury. Um, there's DNA fragments from various kinds of animals. And um, whatever good they say they might do, I'm afraid they're doing some harm as well and they um, need to take a look at that. So before we mandate this, I think we really need to um, re-examine uh, and retest because a lot of kids are having reactions to these and the doctors really don't know why. They, they'll tell you, I don't know why. And I think until they have those answers, then um, there's no way this should be mandated. So that's basically, yeah. yeah. No, I agree. The, um, if, if you look at how they synthesize the vaccines, the fact that they're doing it using the genetic uh, material from aborted, yeah. aborted babies, from uh, sick monkeys, Reese's monkeys, mm -hmm. from uh, dog kidneys, you know, where are yeah. they getting these animals from? I didn't sign on to that no. kind of testing. No. And they're not doing human tests because they say that's unethical. But you know what? They are doing human tests. Yeah, we're the experiment. Say, we, that, say that again? We are the experiment. Correct. So we are the experiment. Have you ever, Are you familiar with the Nuremberg trial? Oh, absolutely, yes. Can you uh, school us a little bit on that? <laughs> well, I mean, after the horrible experiments that we found out that the Nazis conducted on the Jews, in the uh, death camps, the Nuremberg trials were held to um, take a look at that, and the outcome of that was that there was a code developed that said, you know, worldwide um, was agreed to that that should never, ever happen again, and that everyone who undergoes any sort of medical procedure uh, needs to give their informed consent. And informed means you know what it is, for example, that they're injecting into you, and that is not happening now. We are not informed about what's in those shots. So. Well. 
I mean, on the surface, it sounds good. You know, these vaccines are protecting children. And if they were a little bit of saline water with some measles virus in them, then, um, you know, maybe so. But they are actually putting contaminants in these shots. And so we're not protecting the country. I mean, they say it's for he herd immunity and to keep the herd strong. But in actuality, there are so many vaccine injuries happening from these shots that we're weakening the herd. We're not strengthening it. Right, and it used to be, there was a vaccine, vaccine is nothing new, this is not new technology. Uh, humans have been exposing themselves uh, purposely to viruses for a long time in order to develop antibodies and, and an immunity, but we would expose ourselves naturally. They would come in through your, your skin or through your, your mucous membranes, and so your body gets, gets time to react to this virus. But when you inject it directly into your blood, yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. That is the difference. I mean, sometimes people will say, oh, look, you know, you get a little bit of mercury when you eat fish, and you get less mercury when, you know, you get a shot. So what's the big deal? And the big deal is exactly what you just said, that when you digest it, then you have all kinds of filtering mechanisms for that mercury to get out of your system. But when you inject it in the bloodstream, there is no filtering mechanism. It will go into your brain, it will cross the blood-brain barrier. And it's a little known fact, but one of the reasons that boys are more affected by the mercury and the aluminum in the shots is that men, boys in general, have, for whatever reason, a weaker blood-brain barrier than girls do. And so it gets into the boys' brains much faster and much more easily than to the girls. Right, and, and just like you said, when your humans have been ingesting toxins in our environment for thousands of years, uh, lead, um, we've been exposed to ra uh, radium, all these different uh, heavy metals that we just live with them. You know, in low levels, they're not uh, prevalent in everything, but um, how long have we been injecting ourselves with these things? Not very long. And look at the autism rates. You know, they've gone from uh, just very rare to now it's, it, they're, they're saying by 2020 or something, it could be 50% of the children. Right. Which is crazy. They're coming out here. What do I think about the people that are in opposition? Yeah. I agree. I'm I'm absolutely 100% opposed to this, opposed to any sort of forced, mandatory medical treatment. But, I mean, is, isn't it heartening to know that all these people took the time out of their day to yes, come? Yes, it's, it's amazing. It's wonderful. I love seeing the moms, the dads, the, the siblings. It's, it's awesome. Well, thank you for coming out here. I'm a journalist. I'm just covering the event. Well, I'm, I just want to walk all the way down and just try to get a shot of everybody. I'll be extra careful. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So they're telling me to get out. It's not safe. I need to. I guess she's just doing her job. Can't really get mad, but I mean, come on. I mean, look at all these people. It's ridiculous. If they pass this thing, I mean, they're just clearly do not care what Americans think. Anybody got anything to say? Anything to say? Say it. I 
Wait. in favor of parental choice and opposed to this bill, SB 277. Yes, I oppose 277. We need choice. There's, there's no forced vaccinations that are acceptable. Thank you. We already have mandatory. This one is forced. I birthed them. I should decide what happens to them. I love them more than anybody, and the government should not tell me what to do with my children. Anything to say to the rest of the Americans out there who haven't made up their mind yet or don't have an opinion? Um, you need to stand on either line of the fence. You cannot be on the fence because that happened too many times in our history of our world, and we live to regret it. So make a decision and make it now. Thank you. Say something. Hi, my name is Carrie Lewis. Is it on? Okay. Hi, my name is Carrie Lewis. Okay. My name is Carrie Lewis, and I'm from the grassroots organization Awake California, and we are a statewide group that strongly opposes forced vaccination, and we believe in personal liberty. Thank you. It takes away personal choice. It takes away personal rights. Um, it is religious freedom. It breaches everything that is American and that is what we're, we are supposed to stand for in America. So, you know, we are not China. We are not these other, you know, countries that do not allow citizens to have rights and choices. We are a freedom loving country and we don't want our freedoms taken away from us. Thank you for coming, for taking the time out of your day to come down here. Sure. It means a lot. Sure, absolutely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start it, so. Okay, great. I would tell them to think very clearly and thoughtfully about what forcing a medical procedure on someone would mean. That would open the door to many other medical procedures down the line that they could be forced. Where are you from? Oh, I'm a, I'm a freelance journalist. I go to Sierra College. Okay. I'm a Navy veteran. I served on board submarines for five years. Awesome. And I took my oath to my country seriously, and so now I'm fighting for freedom here in California. Awesome. Just like so I did in the, in the south, you know, in the ocean out there. Good so. for you. Right on. <laughs> Thank you. My husband's a veteran as well, and he got the anthrax shot. His whole arm and chest ache really bad from it. Well, I will, with everybody in focus here, I will say that I got the anthrax, a, a couple of them. It's like a seven shot series, I think. And um, I ended up having severe arthritis, and I was uh, severely overweight, and through physical therapy and changing my diet significantly, and and uh, vitamin, lot of, lots of vitamins, vitamin C, uh, oil of oregano, um, and really just changing my lifestyle. I was able to go from um, very unhealthy and borderline diabetes to um, six pack and all that. So there is hope. Yeah, his is just a pain in his arm and chest, and it's. So oh yeah, I get he's it. Thinking he's having a heart attack. Oh man, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, tell him, tell him. Uh, to get out there and, and drink lots of, I, I filter your water, drink lots of water and, and do um, lightweight, high interval, um, low intensity workouts, uh, especially with cables and, and try to build up those individual muscles. I like working with somebody who, um, like my physical therapist was really good at teaching me how to isolate those individual muscles. So right. that's something you can do. Take right. care. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Hey guys. Yeah. You guys want to say anything? What would you like to do? Uh, what do, what do you th why are you here in opposition of SB 270? Why am I here? Okay, I'll tell well, you. I think I know why you got all these kids yeah. here. You but care no. about your children. I'll actually say something because, okay. You can just grab it. Such right a here. Good, funny, funny. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, I'll try to 
I'm not. <laughs> it's like a big furry rabbit tail. So, um, yeah, the reason why I'm here is because um, not only do I homeschool independently, so for a while I was one of the ones that um, was included in the bill, but now I'm no longer, I, but now I'm exempt. That doesn't matter to me because that exemption is going to be just temporarily. And so I am here fighting for my friends that have their kids in um, public school and in private school because they choose. Do you mind if I no, I don't mind at all. So um, my friends are choosing to delay vaccinate or they're choosing to opt out of vaccines and they are going to have their kids kicked out of public and private school. And even though my kids are exempt because I'm homeschooled, I'm down here fighting for those that are going to lose that privilege for their kids because it is their parental right, it is their constitutional right as well too, and I'm not going to stop fighting. And so will my kids. Well, thank you. Uh, do you have anything to say to people who haven't made up their mind about vaccines right, or the SB277? I would, um, I would encourage them to look at number 11 on SB 277 and to really examine the wording that's in there that says anything deemed appropriate by the Department of Health and then I would encourage them to go to CDC's website and uh, research each vaccine individually and then I would also encourage them to go to pharma.org and I would go down the list of 38 pages long of vaccines that are listed that are being uh, researched right now that are coming down the pipe. All right, well, thank you for your time. What's your name again? Annette Tompkins. Annette Tompkins, thank you. Thank you. My name is Isela Duarte, and I just want to encourage those who are confused or don't understand the position of everyone who's opposing this bill to go onto the CDC website and look up every vaccine to see that the viruses and diseases that we have vaccinations for are not dangerous as they say they are. Uh, they are mild. Most people have mild symptoms. Most people will not develop any symptoms or, or just. So they're, they're childhood illnesses. That they they're childhood illnesses that your body can fight and uh, very few will have complications. So I don't think forcing everyone to get these vaccines um, will solve this problem. And I always, I question, why are we holding on to these diseases if you look back to old diseases like scarlet fever and so forth, it's been eradicated um, and there were no vaccines at the time. So why are we suppressing these vaccines and are we, we are continuing to force them upon the public when this should be eradicated on its own? And what do you think um, eradicated scarlet fever and, and yellow fever if it wasn't vaccines? I believe that immunity, we built immunity to them, health, uh, there, there's always been poverty and people are not looking at that. A lot of people um, didn't have the means to survive. Um, most people were slaves. There was only a few that have always had the money or the resources to eat well. I do believe that that's a big contributor to the, to the problem. And in this country, you know, we do have more resources than they did back then. A lot of people do. And I believe that's why we have seen a lot of these uh, diseases fought. And it's not so much the vaccines, it's... It's germ theory, it's uh, sterilization. Sterilization, absolutely. Sanitation. Look at Ebola. Why didn't we have an Ebola outbreak? There's no vaccine for it, but they used sanitation. They did incubation. Sanitation, there was no outbreak here. Yeah, it's understanding how this disease is transmitted. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, well, thank you for sharing, your, sharing with everyone there. I don't know where I was. I don't know where I was. Um, Okay, well, what I, what I hear a lot is that there is no real religious exemption for vaccination in the mainstream media. I hear that no churches are standing up against vaccination, but that is really wrong when I talk to fellow believers of any denom denomination. Once they learn that much of the schedule contains aborted fetal cell tissue, they have a, a serious conscientious and religious objection to that. Um, also, uh, many families that I'm talking to today, as well as my own family, have children who have either suffered injury from vaccine previously, or they have other medical conditions um, that don't qualify under the stringent guidelines for medical exemptions. So maybe they don't have cancer, uh, maybe they don't have leukemia, but they have severe neurological damage, and they don't want to further that damage by giving additional shots. So the government... Anything else you 
people cut us off, she has warned us twice, and she has quite the reputation. So, so what, what so, were they saying there? Go ahead. Uh, so anybody is... She's loved those verbal scoldings, but no, seriously, the Constitution allows for the religious freedom. Um, these senators keep focusing on the medical exemption as a viable option for parents when, in reality, those medical exemptions are not being handed out. Many, many, many uh, medical professionals that do not recommend the full schedule for their patients don't feel comfortable writing a medical exemption and putting their medical license on the line for that medical exemption when the board itself will deny or possibly they'll get they'll receive retribution though they won't uh, be supported in their claim that this child doesn't um, has a sensitivity or is a uh, risk adverse and uh, those assessments aren't even being made so you know RFK Jr. he talked about the checks and balances having been removed and there really is nobody when your government wants to be the parent uh, that was stated in this hearing the government wants to be our parent and our medical doctor and tell us which choices that we should make for our child uh, and not allowing any decision or any uh, choice left in there, then this is a scary, scary decision uh, to even contemplate for our country. It's such a small percentage. If herd immunity was working, we've already achieved it in California. Fixing something that isn't broken just shows that there's a pharmaceutical agenda behind this, and it's really not about uh, child health at all. Uh, what were you saying? Can you say what you said about the uh, Nuremberg again? Yeah, so asking me to administer uh, any kind of a medical product that has a known risk for death, a known risk for seizure. All shots carry a risk of death, and uh, they are already stated by our government to be unavoidably unsafe. And so to ask me to risk that for my child, and uh, my child might die to save another child, um, is against the Nuremberg Code. We. After World War II, they put in place these checks and balances so that, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, after, okay, after World War II, they put in these checks and balances so that this wouldn't happen again where humans were experimented on against their will, where uh, subjects were considered less worthy than others, and there was uh, uninformed consent, coercion, um, to medical experimentation, and we're treating our children like uh, an experiment, a medical experiment, by even a, even thinking about taking away the religious and philosophical obje objections to vaccination. We'd be accept accepting something that has a known risk of death, a known risk of seizure, and I don't believe we can um, honestly, as a society, go on thinking that it's okay to kill some children to save others. All children are, are important. Having a product that's deadly and trying to say that it's going to prevent disease and that's an acceptable loss, I, I, I'm sorry, but that's just not a country that I want to be in. Uh, is there anything you want to say to other Californians and Americans out there who are on the fence? I really want to um, tell all, Ameri uh, all California parents that you may be pro-vaccine, you may love the vaccine schedule as it is currently, but when you can't say no to one shot in the future, um, you're going to realize that you actually wanted to maintain that right to say no and, and maintain the right for a choice. And um, to think that the government officials um, that are lining their pockets with pharmaceutical money are in any way being unbiased and, uh, and fair and scientifically sound by saying all shots are safe, the schedule is safe. Uh, they're not looking out for the best interest of all children. If we take away these rights, just wait. The next thing will be the adult schedule. Um, we all need to be able to maintain the freedom of choice. And it's not about being anti-vaccination. Um, you can be pro-vaccination, and you still should support opposing this bill and standing up uh, to protect the future of all the Californians. And um, it, we really need to take a good hard look at who's who's writing this bill and the people behind it. <laughs>
I just have one quick thing to say. I think this whole thing is so ridiculous because they're acting like keeping children that are not vaccinated in home schools only is going to stop the spread of disease they think that we spread. But the measles outbreak occurred at a public uh, park and children that are homeschooled go to parks, they go to zoos, they go um, to the grocery store. They're always out of their home with other children. So this idea that if we homeschool them, the rest of the public is gonna somehow be, you know, protected from whatever we might be carrying is silly um, because we're gonna be leaving our house. We're not gonna be living in a bubble and we don't require tourists coming into California to be fully vaccinated and that was the cause of the measles outbreak. So this whole thing is just is such a ridiculous ruse implying that it's going to protect the, uh, the California people from something. Plus, uh, weren't some of the people that uh, were involved in the outbreak vaccinated? Yes, there were people that were vaccinated. There were, I think the last statistics that I saw were there were a huge portion of um, the people that contracted measles, they didn't have the vaccination status of, and then the ones they did, many of them were, many of them were not vaccinated. So, I mean, we've got both sides. So the idea that being vaccinated is going to protect you from measles has just been disproven by the people at Disneyland. All right, well, uh, anything you want to say to other Californians out there who might be on the fence about the SB277 or... I, I am begging everybody to get involved because this idea that the government gets to mandate what kind of medical procedures we do and do not accept is terrifying. It is um, the beginning of a very, very dangerous downward slope. Right, my body, my choice. Exactly. Right, Thank you. I'm not going to pay attention. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm here today to really be the voice for 74% of Californians that believe in medical freedom, and they just really don't want this bill. Because, you know, if Senator Pan gets his way, he is going to rob every single Californian parent of their right to decide what goes into their kids' bodies. Uh, I just wanted to say that these vaccines have actually caused, since the year 2000, over 146 deaths for children under the age of 11. 52% um, of people that have been taking these vaccines under the age of 11 have either had adverse reactions or have fatally died. It's something to think about. I think people should look into something like that, read these things before just kind of listening to Big Pharma and all these big institutions that are giving you the right back. So you don't have any kids though, do you? You got any kids? Uh, I don't have any kids. I do have a friend that his kid is now is now handicapped from taking a vaccine. They took the measles vaccine a year ago. Now their kid is handicapped and has, like, I guess, can't really talk well. Has like dyslexia. Yes. Uh, has autism now. He has. She has. Is that boy or girl? It's a boy. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, I, the reason I was asking is, uh, I, I don't think if they get, if they pass this bill, I don't think it stops at kids. I think you and I are next adults. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I would not be surprised. I love the state of California. I was born here. I was born in Modesto, California. Um, if this bill passes, I don't want to leave. It. I would. I would leave to go to somewhere else because I, I do plan on having children in the future. So there's no point in me staying in, in a state that is not even supporting my First Amendment right. So. Yeah. Yeah. No rights. So uh, what's your name again? My name is Ronnie. Okay. Hey, thanks, Ronnie. No problem. Uh, my, my website is uh, radio1984.com. Um, so I'm going to try to get this video syndicated and hopefully we can just get it out there and get get everybody's voices heard because obviously the, the, um, the legislature doesn't want to hear much from many of the people here in opposition. Oh, absolutely. She, uh, she was, people, I guess, were, she described it, I guess, as a... I got it, bro. She described it, I guess, as a adding commentary to, to when they were speaking their, their feelings on the bill. Uh, to me, again, you know, like, um, I wouldn't support maybe someone coming up there and cussing, but people aren't doing that. They're just saying how they feel about the bill. That's another, I feel, violation on our First Amendment rights. And I talk to, you know, you talk to people who have been here for, like, since the early 1900s, you know, when you would come to these meetings and stuff like that, they were never that hardcore against people that had something to say. So it just shows you how sometimes uh, not every change is good. There is bad change as well. You have to stand up for yourself. You have to stand up for your country. Hey, thanks for coming here and taking the time out of your day to stand up for 
for what you believe to be uh, the right thing, you know? Absolutely, no problem, man. Anytime. And uh, yeah, my website, radio1984.com. So radio and then the year 1984.com. Excellent. Like the book? Oh, I'm definitely checking it out. <laughs> All right, man. And what was your name again? Ronnie. Ronnie. And I'm Robert. Robert? Yeah, Robert Winters. Robert Winters. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Where's Pan's doorknob? It's back there, ways. Well, we wouldn't want, that wouldn't be very nice. Yeah, a lot of people have also put flowers on it, the red carnations, which is kind of hilarious. And he's also got sanitizer out inside of his um, door, which is kind of funny because um, he's, He's afraid that anyone that he's, you know, if he gets something on him, he's gonna be like, oh no, and just run to it and just get his head inside and be like, oh, I'm saved. No, you're, you're right. I mean, how could he not be afraid? He's doing something so evil. I know, right? That I kind of believe in that 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 saying, like, what goes around comes around. Yeah. He's reproducing Hitler's ideas, basically. Yeah. So, are you, um, are your parents here with you, or are you just oh, here? That's my mom. That's my aunt. Um, both have their shirts. Oh, hey guys. What was your name again, buddy? Um, this is my aunt, Lana, and this is my mom, Kathy. And hey, Kathy. Wesley. Wesley's my new microphone guy here. He's my new journalist slash reporter. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of, I need like some extra hands. Cool. She's a chiropractor. She's my mother. Oh, hey. She's a chiropractor. I heard a, I, I was over there by the... Um, TV, listening to some of the commentary, some of the people that were speaking, a lot of them were chiropractors, nurses, um, well, people in the medical profession, in one sense or another. And um, would you guys mind sharing your story? Why, uh, why you're here in opposition? Just hold it, hold it up for me. Yeah, what, what do you think, and you reminded me of something, what do you think about the, what was it, 1987, um, that basically that taxpayers are providing liability protection for all the vaccine industry? This is the only medical treatment that doesn't have liability, no matter what happens, the medical doctors are going to be vaccine industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. Go ahead. Okay. The, vac the pharmaceutical company that make vaccinations, this is a multi-trillion dollar industry. They're not going to let it be known that there's, you know, vaccinations that are unsafe for people. They have, I don't know if you've ever heard of the CDC whistleblowers, but they finally, the guilt hit them and they actually came forward saying that they altered the studies, they hid things. They didn't, they didn't inject it into black boys because they were the most uh, susceptible to autism from vaccinations. So they removed the high-risk people from the studies. They altered the studies. 
they, they did all these things. Also, the people that are injured from vaccines, these children and adults even, they are basically told when they receive a settlement, they're given a gag order. So you don't get to hear the ones that got paid a million dollars for their child's injury because they're given a gag order. And they're being paid out, say, 10000 per month as a payment. They're not going to risk not receiving their $10,000 a month payment by speaking up. So they're basically silencing everyone who's injured and against this bill. Did you want to say anything? Um, hello, I'm a certified massage therapist. Uh, I also have a five-month-old son. He is unvaccinated, as am I, as is my mother and my grandmother and grandfather, and the list goes on. My cousins, everyone in my family is unvaccinated. None of us have ever had autism, and that, that is huge. We have a giant family. None of us have ever had autism. I, or seizures. I truly, I've, I've met one child who has not had their vaccinations who has autism. I do not believe that vaccinations alone cause autism, but I think that a lot of children, they have reactions which inflame their brain, mess up their gut. They, most vaccine injured children they have poor bowel movements. So their gut is all messed up. Their brain can inflame from this. And people, it's like honey. Some people are allergic to honey. Some people are allergic to peanut butter. Some people can have it. Like vaccination, some people can have it. But some people can't. Is there anything you'd want to say to Californians who maybe are on the fence or haven't made up their mind about uh, SB 277 or just vaccines in general? I'd like to point them to? The uh, National Vaccine Injury um, Committee, the, um, that's a good one. Also, Dr. Bob Sears, Dr. Wakefield, Dr. Tim O'Shea, there's quite a few, uh, Dr. Blaylock. There's medical doctors speaking up against this. However, they're afraid to do to speak up against the bill because they may be blackballed. They may be uh, losing their license as a result. When my children were tiny and they saw their pediatrician, I I said I wasn't going to be vaccinating them. He said, "You're smart. I didn't vaccinate mine either." So there's, there's a lot more MDs out there than you would ever know that are against this. This also takes away their right as a doctor and their, um, their training as a doctor because now they're told to vaccinate children on a certain schedule regardless of what's going on with the patient. And they're not liable for any problems. So they're going to go ahead and vaccinate this child regardless of what's happening with them. Allergies or they don't know if they have egg allergies at two months old. There's eggs, there's fetal uh, aborted cells, aborted cells in these. Cells, pig cells. Right, there's against, different studies you can read. Jewish religion, Catholic religion. Right. All, you know, AIDS has been there's found in monkeys. Uh, studies that were posted and, and I've read that show that they accidentally had the cancer virus and AIDS virus in some of these vaccinations. So they accidentally... SP40 in the polio vaccine. Yeah. Simian virus stands for... Simian is uh, monkeys. So it was from Reese's monkeys in Africa. And then they switched to the green monkeys. And you can watch a video of that older gentleman. I can't uh, recall his name right now. But he talks about how they accidentally infected everyone. And he, yeah, he did. He, he, you can find the video on YouTube. Just look up Merck. Um, Merck, Merck scientist admits that SV40 was in the polio vaccine. There's yeah. been, a, been a, some studies lately that were post, uh, you know, provided that showed that they had some bad batches of vaccines recently. So it's not. It is not safe. It is not healthy for everyone. And who's willing to take the chance? 
and e even on the live cam, one of the toxicologists had mentioned that the whooping cough vaccination was not highly rated. And more, more <laughs> children get the whooping cough from the vaccination than from natural. Thank you. Thank you. That was fun. They must have consent from every patient according to the Nuremberg Code. If they don't let you choose, they're breaking a medical rule. The Nuremberg Trial Show. Or you'll get the axe Termination Loops That's the word doctors use When vaccines you refuse For you Let's learn from history and end the misery. Sacrificing some for others is not the way. 